Three things you should do when editing photos. Developing a signature style is absolutely key for any photographer looking to grow a client base, and how you edit will significantly influence that. But it can also be a major time suck, and it can oftentimes be more work than it's worth. So in this video, I'm gonna give you my three biggest tips on how to quickly and effectively edit your photos. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I am a professional boudoir photographer in Silicon Valley, California. I've been doing this since 2010 and teaching since 2012, and I enjoy the editing process, but I've also learned it's not the best use of my time. And if I'm doing four shoots a week and I'm editing 100 photos per shoot, that's 400 photos. Now, if I'm doing stylistic work, if I'm doing a cool creative project, I'm gonna spend some time editing those. But generally, I don't need to be doing the same skin smoothing, the same spot removal, the same editing techniques to all of these photos, which is why I've outsourced. But to get to that point, to know what my style was, to make me more efficient in camera, and to know how to train someone to replicate my style, I had to distill down everything that I did in the editing process so I could teach someone else, and that's what I'm gonna teach you today. The three things that I do when editing photos, and I know they will save you a ton of time and a ton of energy working on your own shoots. Also, I'm pretty sure that subscribing to this channel will instantly make you better at editing photos. So be sure to do that too. So point number one is crops and leveling your photos. Number two is removing distractions. Number three is knowing when to walk away. So let's dive in and check out some photos. I pulled up some of my work here so that you can see some of the things that I've done in the past that I would like to change in the future, ways that I've learned from those mistakes, and you hopefully don't have to make them yourself. So let's check out this first photo. Uh, this is one of my favorite poses. Every client buys this one and it looks pretty darn good. And the first thing that I do after I've called my images before I go through and Photoshop anything out or adjust my colors, anything like that, I level all of the images. You can do this in Lightroom really easily or Photoshop. You just click the little straighten, the little bubble level right here and you can drag a line across your horizon. Now, in this case, the horizon is the back edge of the bed. That's what I want to be level. So you just let go and it automatically, which is pretty darn cool, crops the image, rotates it to make that level. This is the biggest pet peeve I have when judging print comps, because I've judged photo competitions all over the US. And when I see tilted horizons, to me, that's lazy straighten your horizons. Going on a 45 degree angle, unless it's to show some kind of wonky perspective, it's not adding to the photos. It's kind of a desperate editing technique like selective color would be, you know, where you make everything black and white except the wristwatch is red or something silly like that. Make your horizon line level. Everything will look more appropriate in the photo. So once I have them level, I want to go in and make sure that all my crops are right because sometimes I'll try new things in camera or I'll crop a scene wide knowing I'm gonna make three copies of it and then do different versions of basically the same pose to create very different images. So now let's take a look at this other photo and we'll talk about different places you can crop an image. I'm gonna do yellow for the ones do you want to do that? Let's go green. I'm red, green, colorblind, so uh, fingers crossed this ends up working out here. But green as in go, red as in stop. We're going to do green the places where you can actually crop. Very top of the forehead, you can cut that off. I like to go lips down. So in between the nose and the lip, that little space down is totally fine. Top of the bust, middle point of the waist, mid thigh mid calf, if you're cropping arms, again, it's here or here, just like on the legs. Now the points you don't want to crop, through the eyeballs, through the mouth, unless they're Canadian, South Park joke, uh, you don't crop the neck, you don't go through the widest point of the bust, no joints, so no elbows, 
no wrists, no knees, no ankles, no hips. So hopefully this pick up stick game of lines here is helpful to you in showing where you can crop and where you should not crop. Most of this I do in camera during the shoot, but later on I might wanna create three or four versions of this same image with different crops and different orientations as well. And let me show you what I mean. So let's take a look at this photo, for example. Uh, you can see she's looking off to the side. She's got thumb hooked in the waistband, groovy. I'm cropped through the leg over here, not through the knees. This one's kind of close to the knee, but it's still just below it. Then I can go this way and I can go through mid thigh. I am through kind of the meaty part of her hand right here. I don't prefer that, but that is not bad, like going through the middle of the wrist. And again, I'm going through the upper part of her, her bust here, the chest, not cutting her actual neck off. And then for a third shot of the same image, I can go lips down. So in this case, I would drag that down just a little to get that space from the lips down. And again, I'm going through the waist here. You might be thinking, Mike, but you're going right through the hip over here. But this one is not, and that line is okay. The widest part of the hip is actually up here, the way her hips are tilted, and so I'm not doing that. So same pose, three very different photos. And that's a thing that I could go through and do with this one if I wanted to also. All right, let's talk about background removal. This is one of my favorite poses. All of my clients love this one. And I've learned how to do it better over the years. So originally, I didn't notice how much the pillows take away from the shape of my client's body. Now, I know having that space back there, total game changer. Given she still loved the photos, you can still clearly see the line of her body, but it's not nearly the same as this one. So I've learned to just take the pillows out when we do that pose. But you can't always just take the pillows out. Maybe there's uh, a you know curtain here or a door or something else. Those things can all just be removed in Photoshop. So. I could go through and I could absolutely remove these pillows if I wanted to. But the, the point here is reducing everything in the background and the foreground that doesn't absolutely add to the image. So when we jump back over here, you know, that pillow in the background does not add to the image. We wanna see the swoop of her body right here. So what you can do, let's select, that bit of the couch. We're gonna go to Content Aware Fill. And we can zoom in to see the preview over here. It looks like it's getting rid of everything, but it's making like her knuckles show up right there. So I'm gonna deselect knuckles as an area to sample from. There we go. And now when I see the whole image, totally fine, right? So look at the difference in this image. Huge, right? This is not a bad photo, she loved it. This, way stronger an image because we don't have any other shapes taking away from the shapes we want to see, mainly the curves of her body. So removing things in the background that don't add to the image, super important. All right, now let's get to our last one. So in the last image we're gonna check out, uh, again, the first thing I did here was subscribe to this channel. So you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing too. But knowing when to walk away is really, really important. And this one I played with for way too long. The whole concept was she's big into cosplay, loves reading, she's a librarian, she's, uh, very nerdy. As a fellow nerd, I can say that. She's also one of my closest friends. So the idea was to get her reading the spell book and making books float around the room. I feel like we nailed that. 
But then I wanted to get kind of crazy and I put little like lightning bolt sparks coming out of the end of her wand over here. And then I hired a video effects editor to take all the books and make them like float up and down and animate the entire scene, which looked kind of cool. Put some fake hair on her that also like waved a little bit as if there was air blowing. Totally brought this image to life, but it was just too much, you know? The magic here is her sitting there in pajamas figuring out these spells. And that is what this photo tells. We don't need sparks. We don't need things actually moving in a looped gif. You know, there were too many books in the scene that we shot and I removed some of them. So knowing when to walk away is huge so that you're not just sitting here making all these little, like if I just maybe do that a little bit and then I'm gonna go back over here and I'm just gonna give a little bit more pop of color and then I'm gonna go, I'm just randomly clicking on ones. Let's throw a warming filter on. And then you're just spending all of this time adding salt to the dish is what it is. And if you've ever put too much salt in your food, you know that it absolutely ruins it. There's too much of a good thing. Thankfully, with Photoshop, we can just drag those layers to the garbage can and be done with it. You can't unsalt your food. But keep that in mind when you're working on your photos. Everything that you do is adding salt, and eventually you get to the point where you're over-salting the food. So whatever the story is you're telling, whatever you're trying to accomplish, remove everything that doesn't actually add to the story. Don't add anything by that same token. So knowing when to walk away. And this is the thing, you're gonna to get to a point where you're like, what else can I do? As soon as you start asking yourself that, that's probably the time to walk away. So there you go. Those are my three, however many fingers that is, three biggest tips to editing your photos more effectively and more efficiently. And I've got a killer editing course in the Boudoir Guild. So if you head to boudoirguild.com, pick up the editing and workflows course and I go into great detail how I go through all of my images and how you can do the same. Even if you don't do my same dark and moody look, it'll work for all kinds of boudoir photographers. Uh, but my three big points were keep your horizons level and crop in appropriate places. Number two is removing all distractions. And number three, knowing when to walk away. There is too much of a good thing, especially when it comes to editing. You are amazing. See you inside.